Yeah, so real quick, um, the Oregon State, uh, I don't actually know what it's called, has uh, made some changes to the public comments. And so going forward here, all our meetings have to have a Zoom component to allow uh, either members and or members of the public who want to join the meeting but not actually show um, beyond Zoom. As such, the C has required all of our meetings to be recorded on the Zoom and posted online. So every meeting we have from this one forward, forward will be recorded digitally and uh, will be posted online. So just be aware that you're uh, now going to be on the city's page in video format. Um, and uh, there's Warren. So so that will be uh, very long. Just want to make everybody aware of that change. Warren has joined us now. So I'm, I don't see him. But Warren, would you like to introduce yourself, please, to the minutes? I'm here. So I guess I'm going to need to. Need to elect a new vice chair. So the uh, voting for nomination. If, if I may, just real quick, just so everybody knows, Alex no longer works in the city planning because of COVID, so he's no longer eligible, which is why we have lost a member. And so he was the vice chair. So now we need to. Mm -hmm. Chair. Do we have any volunteers for vice chair? Nancy is willing to take that position. Does someone please call it Nancy? I'm going to call me Nancy and it's okay. So all those in favor, say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Nancy is welcome to vice chair. Sure. Thank you. Now, the uh, gentleman had a chance to read the minutes of the last meeting. Does anyone have any sense on that? Does everyone have an opportunity to read them? I'm not getting any answers. Yes. Does anyone entertain a motion to accept the bread or the directions? And make a motion to accept the minutes as written. Second. will stand approved as read. Please vote. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Please will be accepted as written. Yeah. No I know of. Just real quick for Warren. Warren, uh, since you're on video, Heidi can see you to vote. Yes, yeah, just if you could just raise your hand, that would help us so we can easily get you. Thank you. I can barely see you at times because of the echo, but um, I'm trying. Yes, uh, comparing numbers over the past uh, three months, we're still seeing consistency with ridership, both on the fixed route and uh, battle rides. One thing we are noticing on battle rides, peak times of uh, 
9 a.m. until approximately 11 a.m. or getting very full. So we will be looking at any uh, possible uh, opportunities to satisfy those times during our next scheduling bid, which will be at the end of April. Uh, other business, we, uh, of course, the mass mandate was lifted in the state of Oregon, but the FDA has continued it through April 18th. Uh, we have signs posted on the buses. We discussed with uh, operators about the fact that they still are required, both by the operator and the passengers. We've also discussed the importance of uh, uh, avoiding any confrontation, using any situations that might come up with somebody wanting to argue about the uh, mask mandate. We do realize that there could certainly be some confusion with the uh, FTA versus the state. Fortunately, so far, the uh, mask mandate has not been an issue on the, the buses. Most of the uh, passengers are uh, very understanding. Do you have any questions or discussion on the report? So you've been able to fulfill the needs between the 9 and 11 or 11 or just had to be juggling some things to make it work? Yeah, some, some days are better than others, but we are able to uh, to right. Definitely take some juggling. Oh boy, <laughs> I don't mean to. <laughs> Uh, these the circulator run. Oh, no, oh down rank, yes. Both the ADA and general run. Do those things include shots? Oh, uh, yes, that is correct. Yes. Mm -hmm. well, I guess that brings up to you, yeah, and real quick for Paul, just, just so you know, there's been a bit of change to the public meeting wall, and uh, we're required now to record and be on Zoom. So we do have the Zoom option open if anybody chooses to show up, but also know that this city hosting our the videos and our meetings on the same website. But, uh, and that, that will be for here on the phone or digital. Um, so, as we talked last time, uh, the we're preparing for the 24 25 uh, biennium. And as the committee uh, talked about, we're going to continue to fund the candy loop and the service. Um, one of the requirements of the SIF is that the Clackamas County partners, this includes the city of San Diego, the city of Wilson, the Clackamas County, the South, South Clackamas, and Camby, um, present all of their programs to a um, advisory board. And they approve it for the county for those on the trimet. As such, they're trying to staff that advisory board, and right now they're short Hispanic representation. So they're looking for Hispanic representation. So if anybody knows somebody who could be a member of that, that would be great. It's only two meetings uh, from about six to nine twice. Uh, so it's just two meetings uh, somewhere in the May June era. And the first meeting will just be the presentation of the uh, programs, the second meeting, questions, and notes. So it's really simple. If you, anybody knows anybody would be interested, let me know so I can put that forward to the committee. And if they don't fill that need, is that going to delay? It shouldn't be well. We, between all or five of us, we should find somebody. So that's the, the, the we're missing low income right now, which Sandy is to have a bill for us for this kind of I can get to all that I like that. Okay, yeah, let me know. Okay, and then do you want to continue on? Or, uh... Yeah, let's uh, let's hit the candy. Uh, so, as we discussed in our last meeting, we need to make some adjustments to the candy. So, uh, we'll start. The first adjustment is the um, the actual timing. We talked about the 5.30 a.m. run. Uh, ironically, we talked about that we have uh, for a week straight on that run, uh, the only rider we have on it. However, it turns out that's an individual whose scooter had broken down and he got fixed. He is not with us. 
So we still have um, zero ownership on that 535. We did send out a survey through the, um, the February, so you can see the results of that survey. The only individual who had a negative response about that just happened to be our scooter. Um, everybody else was fairly positive uh, and, and didn't seem to be affected. So uh, as long as everybody's okay with that, we will begin um, change on the first to switch that 530 route to the end of the day. So we will, uh, instead of running as early, we will run later uh, into the evening, which we think will, we, better, we, we definitely have significantly more ridership in the afternoon time than we have more time. So we could move and it's gonna be good. Are you getting uh, lots of students riders? We get quite a few students With this shift, uh, we end up shifting the entire route into 10 minutes. It's about 10 minutes. It'll actually be better for the middle school, um, and it shouldn't affect high school much. So uh, that'll be they've been asking us for uh, a shift so that we can get some of them to school, especially from the Sequoia area, because they're too close to get bus service and a little too far for kids at high school. So we're hoping they will start to ride. But yeah, we'll be like that for high school. And uh, hopefully that will continue. So this will be a schedule that's going to take effect. May 1st. May 1st. So then, uh, is it uh, in the uh, conversation with the uh, administration, school administration, to see if they might change the, the starting times in the fall if we're going to have to adjust our schedule? The, uh, the schedule times we, we have, we looked at based on their fall changes, should be fine. It should, yeah, they, they should course them up. They'll, they'll just take the later bus in the first time. Um, as far as the uh, actual route change goes, we looked at that. It doesn't really, it doesn't save us any time. It doesn't really hurt us much. I don't think um, the, the biggest problem, I think you did this in the numbers. I hope you do this issue. The biggest reason I ran into was there is a lot of time on the corner of Township and Ivy. Sometimes I could get through that intersection in less than a minute, and other times I was almost waiting for seven minutes at one point. Is that in the afternoon, that long wait? Yeah. I thought I'd run out of time to feel like that. Um, it was actually just before that and a little after is when it, it was around the four o'clock hour when a lot of people were trying to head home or back and forth. So that was. But we've been dealing with that already since the start of this. So hopefully the ID project will eventually go away. Is it because of traffic or because of construction? Construction has to start. Yeah. And what, what is the ID project? There's going to be an ID street improvement project coming up where they're completely improving the 99 to well, how will I help the wait? Um, they're supposed to be putting a controlled intersection. It's a work in progress with the county. So it's like the only change is down by the township there? Yeah, so the, the thought was instead of going down fourth, we would just go to township and go straight. We were hoping that would gain us a little bit of time. It's not. So the only benefit is uh, the huge benefit that we can see. Nobody you nobody's riding. We're not seeing any ridership. Um, now there is Amazon going on that corner, um, and there is the steel company there. I'm not sure we see much ridership from the steel company. Um, Fourth Avenue does have the restore at the end of it, and it does have a little bit easier access to um, the lobby trail road. Fourth Avenue is for the street. Yes, yeah. So where we go. There's that new, there's another new big one there. Yeah. 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 And so I, I, I don't know. Again, I guess our thinking right now is that we just leave it as is and reevaluate it and then stop us. Are you picking up quite a few riders at Township and Ivy? No. Oh, at Township and Ivy? Uh -huh. No. We're, we're at, no, uh, not really. We're, but we're talking about township and um, Sequoia. Yeah. We don't think anybody up there at all. 
And we don't think anybody will fuck well, that's where you're talking about. So we are on foot. We are talking about going to Township. So right you go down fourth, we turn left on Redwood and right on the Township. Um, and we were talking about going to Township, taking just a straight right on Township and just staying on Township. The only potential benefit right now that we can see is the uh, roads department would love to strike the sidewalk there at Township and Redwood. And if we move the stop around the corner, they like that. But we're open. It, it doesn't really matter because we're not seeing ridership on either place. It's just, there's no pros and cons. But we're still relatively new. Yes. And they take up a few people in for about this possible use. We are getting people in the farther in, though, at the master area. No. So we do have a rider that does get a lot of the free stuff mm -hmm. pretty regularly. Okay. Yeah. So I guess we have one more minute. But nobody in the on the fourth avenue yesterday at all. Um, Sequoia and Fred Myers, which is uh, which is right there, is our most popular stop. So we have to go down seventy. Yeah, you have to go somewhere. So it's far down like Pioneer Commons around there. You know, no, not that. There's one. Pioneer is one person at the top. We have no boards. And then when we turn on the fourth, we have no boards or lights. Uh, what we see, I think you have one here. And then we have our second business stop right there. Right. But so gas prices are going up, we may increase your ride. It's very possible. Yeah. We have to, to develop something people can count on. We can't be changing routes and changing schedules because then people can say, you can't count on how much going to be there. So in order to develop that relationship. Yeah. Do we have a conversion when Amazon's going to be part of the correct end of the I think, I don't even think they're starting until later. So it's going to be three projects. Okay. And I would prefer to talk to uh funding department see if we can talk Amazon and see if they can give us a shelter and a place to pull into that as opposed to just servicing the corner. There's no good corner there. They're all uh, there's no sidewalks all around on that corner. Shelters might encourage drivers as well because people don't want to stand out and get in the same place for a time. Yes, I agree. They're uh, we're once we finish the 990 each project, we'll start looking to that the circular here and see if we'll use more shelters. Are those shelters on 990 on the street or on the sidewalk? And they were, it's sort of the side of the side that's open. Yeah. Traditionally, they open on the street side. Um, there was one on 99 years ago that opened onto the sidewalk. And I, I prefer that myself. Because if you're sitting in an open sided shelter with all the cars are cruising by and the water's pouring in, they're hitting the puddles and the lights in there, that's not pleasant the way it goes in that condition. So the problem we run into is uh, twofold. One is the, uh, the shelter has to be placed back off the sidewalk because of ADA requirements, which means that if you open it in the back, you're putting it usually on somebody else's property. So you have to get right away from the the other is in order to turn it uh, long ways so it's not facing the road, then you have to take out more space, and we don't have the right way to do that. So we're pretty limited on where we can take out. Even though it's facing the street, it's back away. From it's back away. Yeah. 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 So you have the sidewalk and then the shelter. So it's, it's on the other side of the side. Yeah. Well, any shelter is better than that. It's absolutely better. <laughs> <right. laughs> no, I said on that phone, I said Meyer Station. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> One or two times, not much, not good. And, and real quick, going back to the proposed route, one of the other benefits um, is the big personal has asked if we could put a stop closer to that school before they get across at that crosswalk. So, in the proposal, we plan on putting a stop on the other side of the crosswalk if it's something you guys could go for. Um, and it would allow us to do that for public parks that paint with the curb. Um, and I think because of park over there, there's an open area for people and trail access, we might see maybe more riders. So I would Possibly. say, I would say that she, she's a township, would be more <laughs> beneficial <laughs> than the form. Well, it does take you past the middle school. It does. Well, it, it technically it, corner the middle school at Redwood Township. Um, it's their, it's their kid. 
Right. Well, if you go for it, but if you go to the road down, you can straight. And straight past, and there is a crosswalk right there. That's roughly where we put the stop sign at the crosswalk. It goes over to the east. Well, the time you said you would ride the third floor, but you need to stop for the gas prices keep going up. I said, for fun, I'm not <laughs> so I do you think it should happen? My recommendation, we don't gain too much time we don't lose too much time by changing it to township. And I think we might see more more ridership and especially in school change. We might see kids actually riding that bus to go to the local streets. How long the process is to change? Yeah, it's instantaneous. We can do it in an hour. Just have to send out your food size. Mm -hmm. She loves it. Well, I, I have temporaries on everything that these haven't solidified. We haven't solidified so, any of the temporaries, so nothing is solidified. Okay, so we don't need to make, take a vote on this. No, you just tell us to do it. Okay. <laughs> I think it's a good idea. How about you? Yeah, I think it's a very good idea. Um, and just as history, when uh, I can still first went in, I actually went down and met with them to see if we could get ridership from them. And unfortunately, their ship, the start of their shifts in the morning and when they get off it did not coincide with what our schedule was. And it's that's the difficulty is Need and need. Now you 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 all used to go down fourth and then take a right of it and then left on Pot. We used to come around that. Um, there's a uh, Shimazu, is that what it is? Yeah, Shimazu. I, I don't know what exactly they do, but the park not fairly empty. So again, we've not seen anybody interested in that. That other is it BB? Yeah. Um, also fairly empty, and I have not seen any computers there. My main reason to go down Fort originally was for the logging trail. That's why we said for the people use it. But as Heidi points out, there's access on township. So that's the possible thing. Um, During the industrial sites, there's a lot of information about CAT and that it is free. Yes, we actually went and contacted them when we first started doing this. Uh, a lot of them, their shifts are, are not really conducive to our system right now. And honestly, most of those are strong. So, we don't. A lot of businesses have relocated here from the Portland area. And so their workers are not commuting <laughs> from where they live in Camden. So, let's <laughs> So this brings us up to new business if we can. Just before we get so do you all want us? I want to one more issue here. Uh, you all want us to make that change then? Yes. I think it's a change. I agree. Okay. Uh, and then, so I just want to bring up one more thing. Uh, our ridership numbers, and they're in the packet, they go down. And the reason they're going to go down, I wanted to make you aware of this. Is that we found the drivers were not counting drivers correctly. So we were getting to the transit center. And that was just a miscommunication on our part. Um, that we, people were getting on the bus and they were riding through the transit center, but the drivers were considering them an off and a back off. So if you had a group of seven people who wanted to you know, get on at the uh, high school and then ride to the pool, the drivers as well as seven people got off at the trend center and got right back on, so that's 14. So we found out that some of our riders were not quite what we were looking for. So we're going to see a little bit of a decrease before it starts to go back up. Just want to make everybody aware of that before it happens. So you're all like, ah, people are turning. They're not. <laughs> so. so that brings us up uh, to top. <laughs> So uh, triannual audit, this, uh, every three years we get audited in the state. Just wanted to make you aware that that is happening in May, which means that we'll go through our, our stuff with a fine tooth comb. And when I get the results, I will bring them to you much. Uh, what they, they always
always find something that's going to be different than let us know when we adjust your change. And sometimes they're very simple things like uh, policy procedures we need to change, and sometimes they're more significant. So I'll let you know what that looks like afterwards. We have no concerns about it. I don't have any concerns about it. Uh, Campaign's uh, fairly well uh, run. Uh, my predecessor did a fantastic job. So it's, it's in, in good order. And you have a new Yes. So, um, again, uh, Julie, some years ago, wanted to create a new position. And she fought hard for it. And the amendment happened and it got put off. And then we got a new boss and he wanted to go reevaluate it. And, and finally, that's fine. <laughs> so we have a we have a part-time admin and she's gonna help us in the office and then we have a lot of Heidi's burden in a lot of the record keeping and a lot of the crunching as well as some of the back operations such as package. She also did our minutes, the minutes that are in there, she'll start doing that. So we're excited. She works uh Monday through Thursday, five hours a day, and she's already uh, trying to uh, fix our office and get back. So is she a city employee? She is a city employee. Uh, used to be the mayor. So. <laughs> She's a great gal. She, I would love to have a chance to ever work with her. Yeah. Yeah, no. So how do you get her? Oh, yeah. And you got some technology? Yeah. So we're having to look at updated technology. Um, our current video GPS provider um, with our agreement to you know, go for another year contract, they're phasing out their old systems that we have in several of our buses, exception of the newest ones. The newest ones have the new, what they call Vulcan systems. So with that, it's going to require the full camera upgrades, hard drives, all that, monitors, everything. Um, so we're estimating about 10 of our vehicles and we took away the ones that were working on surplusing at this time and so forth. We're going to need a whole new system, which is something we're going to need to budget for probably the next fiscal year, if not sooner. Um, the other thing we are working on is, uh, and Scott's very excited about this one here, uh, is upgrading our scheduling software for tablets. So all those paper notes that the drivers use on the dial guide and so forth, those would be going into a tablet mode for the next time. So it's a little bit more sleeker, cleaner, and a lot less radio traffic and so forth. Um, and it would allow the driver to be able to have everything documented by pushing a button versus stopping and writing. Um, with that, we're also looking at the option getting tabs on the fixed route, but it's something we're looking at right now with our current We have funding for any of this in the budget already. So we, we do have a technology budget. Thank you. How did it Yeah, so we Good question. Um, it sounds like a lot. They a, had to come a, yeah. a year ago, I'd say that would cover it, no problem. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, the last quote we got, which is a whole rehaul of everything, $197,000. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if we're going to be making that. And that we split between the two budgets? Yeah, I mean that's I think I think we're gonna look at the possibility of doing uh, partial upgrades to partial systems to the new budget start you have July first. If you have hundred and twenty five thousand now, yes. maybe another hundred and thirty thousand in July. Uh the hundred and I'd say fifty percent of the hundred and twenty five is gonna pair up. Uh once uh, Sandy's doing an RFP right now uh, for technology. And you know, once we have a good feel for theirs, if, if theirs won't work out, then we may just upgrade our existing dialect system. And if we can do that, that would be tablets. That's going to be about eighty thousand dollars. So I can just take that eighty of the hundred and twenty-five, and then just throw that in there. And then next fiscal year, then we can tackle all the cameras that we 
and also the shift from us that are So we may not need this into two sides. When was the last time the cameras were updated? It seems to be that was a few years ago. So, so uh, our new buses are coming with this new building. So our old buses could come back in 20. I want to say that some of the paperwork I have is back in 2014, yeah. 2015, um, from what I've seen. But it was already slightly older system that they've been working with, and now they're trying to actually shut down that software. I'm actually losing like map access when we do the videos in front of us on the map that's going away in August because they're slowly so shutting the program. That they were based on who was they talk about the actual manufacturer the service provider. It, it's the service provider. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. I won't be able to follow the same hard drives on the road. So is these systems that were in the new buses proprietary with the buses that were being used? So no, the, the systems are independent of the buses. Okay. So the buses are one manufacturer and the systems are one manufacturer. And there's multiple manufacturers of these systems out there. So we have options. We have options. Um, they, are, they, they do, and part of the problem is they run these, these things as what they call software as a service. So you don't actually, you buy the hardware, but you put the software with the hardware. And you pay for it incrementally, like uh, and Microsoft does that now in Office. Um, so it's the software that's actually outdated the hardware. The software is advancing, and they're, they're not going to support the old hardware yet. So the old, old hardware technically works perfectly fine, right? But they're just not going to support it, so we won't be using it. We'll still be using the same software provider, just multiple the hardware. Um, so you, so the software and the hardware go hand in hand. So you, you buy the hardware from the software vendor, they buy the software. So if you change uh, the hardware, you also change the software because they're one of Okay, so you're stuck with both of them. Yeah. So okay. So if I so if I go out and say I'm going to change all of the cameras, then I'm going to change the hardware and the software vendor at the same time because. Of so the new buses that are coming with new hardware, they're going to be using their right. service providers coming with that. So yes. all new buses that are purchased will have to have that. And they already do. Yeah. So they, the, when we order buses, we order it with the, the hardware, and they put the most updated hardware in. So it's really the 10 older buses that we buy. Those are the ones where we lose our service. Well, we're getting the new buses, and how many are there? We just got two. And then we have two more coming hopefully soon. We do a year first. So if we if we got if we had 10 old ones and four we get replaced with the new buses because yeah, we're yeah. already going to be purchasing new systems. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, we, we should uh, we should be able to just replace the ones we have the buses. So the good news is with Candy's RFP. They've included us in their RFP. So I don't have to go back out for the um, So for those of you who don't know, that's a request for proposals where we go out and we ask all the vendors to propose how much it would cost. So I, if I wanted to go to a whole new hardware software vendor, I have three bids that I could use. I think only one of them comes close to our current vendor and replace it. The other, the other two are well outside of our. So are the new buses replacing the six route buses? Or? The two new buses I'm getting are actually buses that Julie ordered or I ordered that Julie put in the budget uh, to a little over two years ago to run the Cami Loop. So the buses we're using on the Cami Loop right now are buses you have to replace older buses, so we're still short two buses. These are actually the Cami Loop buses. So then the two that are coming. Yes, those are the two, the Cami Loop buses. So you got you got to. Uh, I got to uh, last September. And those two are two. Those two replaced two old buses that had to be returned. For, for, for so they're months. not for six routes. No, these are these are all for the loop and that way. We did get one bus for the uh, fixed route, and that's it. One go. We also have the van coming. Have a what? A van transit van. That should be here. So we'll have two vans then. So this is a different sort of van. This is a, a longer, taller van, 
And uh, TriMet has uh, gone to a lot of these as opposed to cutters. And what they allow is they allow three mobility devices and or uh, nine passengers or, or a combination because the seats actually fold up. They're skinnier and they're a little bit shorter, so they fit better. They get better gas mileage overall. So we're hoping that it is a good replacement for cutaways that we used on the highway. This is kind of an experiment. State is paying, uh, it's 100% covered by the state. So we're uh, hoping this works out really well because we may look at replacing all the data and cover this over time with this time. Can I backtrack a little bit? Sure. Question about um, so there's 10 buses currently with the old hardware software. Technically, there's more, but 10 that we are actually keeping for at least. So 10 of them will have to be converged. Yeah, there's technically one old buses and one new one that just needs a test. Um, another question follow up on that. So let me rethink the thought. Thank you. You didn't come up with it? No, just to say it's working. Why would you bring that up in the discussion? I have a question about new buses for an order. Are we now going to lean more towards electric? And stuff like that, and uh, or maybe a combination of both. Because we are, we, we are uh, the, the two new buses we ordered, we ordered uh, almost two years ago, so they're they're just gas buses. Uh, when we build our new facility, which hopefully we can start soon, um, we will be electrifying that facility. So all the all the electrical utilities will be built when the facility is built. Because right now, the city has no capability for charging. And so when we do that, we can start to look at ordering electric cars. There are no electric companies. That has not been done yet. So they're just starting to come off the line, and none of them have been certified by the federal government for use and purposes. So nobody's able to buy this. Right now, they're just the markets. Um, and they cost about a million dollars a piece. So we haven't quite got the funding to pick those out. I was yeah. just wondering if something. But yeah, that is our plan. Our plan is to electrify the yard so we can start asking for money and upgrade our fleet. What is the status of the new facility? Is it just the one that's currently being built? Or is there more? The city had to replace the, the finance director uh, left. And as such, I was asked by the city manager to put it in a pool because I need the finance director to help me. I've got half the funds for the building in cash, and I need, we're going to have to find funding for the ground. Uh, that would be a finance function. So we just, as of February, hired the full time finance director. And of course, they're in the middle of the budget season. So as soon as they've got the budget caught up, I'm going to sit down with them and see if we can figure out where the funding is that will get into hiring a project manager and then get this stuff in design and hopefully start to move out. Okay, so now we're going to talk to the vacancy. Yeah, that's just a reminder. We still have one vacancy. Oh, well, we have one vacancy. We have two? Uh, we have two vacancies. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. I forgot Mr. Weiss uh, is no longer uh, uh, here in um, the city. So we have two vacancies. So if you know anybody uh, that can represent uh, any emergency you'd love to happen, Information. Now, this is just a request. Uh, you know, we I put this together sort of off what we you know we have going. But is there I mean, this is to, to you all? Is there things you want to see on here, don't want to see here? Is there information that we can present? Um, this is sort of an open forum for what this this is how I, I, I've been doing it, but this information that I provide is for your benefit. And so I, I'd love to hear from you if this is this works for you, or if you would like us to add information. For instance, is there things in the operations report and staff that you'd like to hear about that we're not giving you? Um, is there other information you'd like to hear about that we're not giving you? Uh, let can you let, let us know? Because uh, I'd love to provide what you're looking for. Maybe bring that up again at this meeting. We didn't have time to think about. Sure, I can do that. Yeah, absolutely. Can do that. 
Probably be able to make it next time. <laughs> 